Welcome to the Sundance Central video on how to weather your rolling stock. You'll learn from this video each of the steps you need to know to weather your rolling stock to look like it's been on the road for years. As you know, there are a number of weathering methods and excellent videos on this topic. You'll see what we did here and how we followed the steps to take an undecorated box car to a finished model. These are the ground pigmented powders that are very useful in the weathering process. They're available at hobby shops, at train shows, and online. The ones we have here are from Bragdon Industries. They often come as a set. Here you can see black, gray, dark brown, rust, and earth color. What you see here are two color stains we put together using brown and then black shoe dye and alcohol. Now we usually mix these 50-50, but if you want a lighter or darker effect, just change the mix. By the way, we recommend you wear vinyl or latex gloves unless you're really interested in weathering your hands. What you see here are acrylic latex paints that could be purchased at any arts and craft store like Michael's or Joanne Fabrics. These are two ounce bottles. You should choose a flat sheen color with no gloss. Today we're using pure black, medium yellow, light tan, light gray, medium gray, and barn wood. You'll see later we won't use a big volume of these paints because most of them will be used in a dry brush method. We use the lusterless lacquer you see here as an overspray to seal the decals and the final weathering onto the surface of the car. You can also use doll coat. These spray cans are easy and quick if you have a small surface to coat. For our weathering, we like to use Floquel lacquer-based paints in our airbrush. You can also use water-based paints if you wish. The airbrush you see in the upper left-hand portion of the screen is a dual-action internal mix airbrush from Badger. The brushes in the right-hand corner of the screen are the usual assortment of flat and round brushes that we use to apply either full coats of paint or dry brush painting. We started with Bachman's new 1 to 20.3 30-foot boxcar, undecorated right out of the box. We chose the Bachman boxcar as a starting point because of the excellent detail on the car. Here you can see the boxcar after we applied our decals with our logo, the car data, and car number to both sides and to the ends of the car. The logo was designed by our team and the decals were made for us by Stan Cedarleaf. Here you can see the clean end of the boxcar before the decals were applied. And now the shot of the boxcar end after the decals were applied. To make the decals lay down, we used Solvacet while the decals were still wet. After the decals dried, we went back and cut the decals along the vertical board lines and applied another coat of Solvacet to snug them in. Another advantage of the Bachman car is that the roof can be removed easily. This is great for weathering, but also for use as a trailing sound or battery car. Here you can see we remove the trucks to allow us to weather the trucks separately from the body of the car. The trucks are easier to weather when they're removed and you can do a more complete job when you work on them separately. 
The Bachman cars came with individual wood slats for the truss rods through the turnbuckles and we replaced those with a single wood board that we weathered beforehand. We now have the car on its side to remove the couplers. Again, this allows us to weather the coupler as a separate component. For this car, you need to remove the chain on the coupler lift bar. You can see we are now using the light gray acrylic latex paint full strength to simulate a weathered natural wood surface. Now the prototype did not allow roof walks to be painted because they didn't want their workers to slip. So just use slow, even strokes as you apply the paint. You want an even but thin coat so the wood grain detail that the manufacturer has molded in will come through, especially because other weathering colors will be applied on top of this coat later. Here you can see we are touching up the edges of the car so it looks consistent when viewed from the side. Again, there are many details the manufacturers build into these models that just get lost when the car is new and shiny. So take your time and touch up these areas to get a consistently weathered look. The paint is dry, so now we're applying the dry chalks to the painted roof walk boards. The medium brown powders give the board some contrast and texture when applied over the lighter color. The brush we're using here is a stiff bristle variety to help work the chalks into the grain of the roof boards. In this shot, you can see we are testing various colors of weathering chalks and paints supplied with a dry brush method. You can begin to see the roof walk with the weathering chalks brushed in for color and for texture. In this shot, you can see some dry brushing of the acrylic latex colors on the body of the roof. We have a bit of an assembly line with the car roofs and we're lining them up one by one for various applications. First, the gray acrylic latex and when dry, the weathering chalks are brushed in. The prototype for the Bachmann boxcars had a wood planked roof rather than a metal roof. So we need to get some extra texture and some color in the same direction as the wood grain of the boards on the roof. We do this using a dry brushing technique. Now dry brushing simply means applying the paint to the brush and then instead of painting the actual surface, you brush most of the paint off the brush and onto a cloth or a newspaper so the brush is literally dry of nearly all the paint. When you use the dry brush, the texture on the surface you paint will naturally pick up the small amounts of paint left on the brush. We're using a combination of black, gray, barn wood, tan, and white paint. Here you can see the brush is nearly completely dry of paint, but we're going back one more time to bring out the fine edges on the wood grain. This work might seem a little painstaking, but it's really not as slow as you might think. Just remember the time that you invest in some of the more fine weathering techniques will pay off in a big way when the model is viewed close up. We are using the black pigmented powder closer to the center of the roof walk to add another layer of color and to simulate a darker surface under the roof walks.
Here is another angle where you can see we are blending in the darker color weathering chalk near the center of the roof. Now that the dry brushing and the weathering chalks have been applied and the edges blended in a bit, we're going over the entire area with dull coat applied with our airbrush. An even but light coat of dull coat works very well to seal our finished weathered roof. Nice wide and even swaths with the airbrush give us a very good coverage and a seal that holds up to normal handling. Remember to have a very good ventilation when you use lacquer based paints like dull coat. When you paint a larger area like this there are a lot of fumes in the air. You can see on this video we're actually painting outside. The finished sealed roofs are now drying in the sun. Now if you've used an airbrush with lacquer based paints before, you know it doesn't take long for the paint to dry. On a warm day, a light overspray is almost dry on contact and the model can often be handled a short time later. The airbrush you see here is a single action external model with a bottle for larger quantities of paint. Here we're using engine black with a very light overspray to dull down the sheen on the painted surfaces. We start on the underside of the car. Here's the assembly line in action. One person is cutting the boards for the undercarriage, another is taking couplers off, still others are removing trucks. Everybody has a role. You can see how much easier it is to handle and paint the car with the trucks and the couplers and the roof removed. Now as the car is pivoted, it allows us to pick up the external details with the overspray like grab irons, hinges, brake wheels, etc. As you pivot the car to get a good look, keep your eyes peeled for details that are just begging to visually pop from the shiny surface. If you're weathering what would be a metal part, think about how things would naturally rust. If you're using a darker or lighter overspray to streak the car's sides or ends, think about how water would run off that car and where it makes logical sense for subtle streaks to appear. Our assembly line is back in action. Here we're using more engine black to pick up details on the side of the car. Now the engine black not only dulls the painted surfaces but also provides a darker weathered base to contrast with the other weathering colors. Here we are applying some light weathering using Floquil Roof Brown. Roof brown simulates old rust that has turned dark brown. So in this step, we're using the double action airbrush to provide a weathered, rusted look where metal parts exist on the wood car. Things like door hinges, latches, brake wheel assembly, etc. Here you can see we are lightly streaking some of the boards with engine black to simulate areas where water runoff would naturally discolor and darken the wood. Think about how water would normally run off a boxcar like this, and that's where you're going to be applying the streaks. Mm -hmm. 
You can see some additional touch up here with the engine black and how the water runoff has been simulated as well as some general areas of discoloration. You can see the car now with some of the black streaking that has been applied. The roof you see in this shot has the roof board weathered, but the body of the roof has not been weathered yet. Notice that weathering streaks happen over and through lettering and heralds, just like in real life. Here you can get a feel for the assembly line in action. Roof boards are being weathered on one table and roof brown is being applied around the metal parts on the car on another table. You can see roof brown weathers everything, by the way, including your thumb. So that's why it's always a good idea to wear gloves. Now in this picture, it may not appear that much paint is being applied because roof brown and Tuscan are very similar colors, but you'll see in the finished product, it's the subtle color variations that actually make a model pop. Now keep in mind with your airbrush, an internal mix dual action airbrush allows you to regulate not only the amount of air used, but the amount of paint that flows. If you want to create a small thin line or paint very small details with an airbrush, use more air and less paint. And with any airbrush, don't be afraid to get close. This allows you to spray a very thin line. Just for fun, try writing your name in script on a piece of cardboard or newspaper by getting close you'll be amazed at how accurate you can be. Because the doors on this model actually operate, we wanted to provide some weathering for the inside as well. We are airbrushing some Floquil grime right here, and this light overspray brings out the molded in detail of the floorboards. Now we are overcoating the grime with a mixture of black shoe polish and alcohol to give the floor an added depth in its look. The darker color over the light base coat allows detail to show through when the top coat is applied sparingly with a dry brush. Now this contrast really allows molded in detail to come alive when it would have been completely lost in the original factory paint. Now we're overcoating the grime with a mixture of black shoe polish and alcohol to give that floor an added depth in its look. Here's the assembly line in action. One person is cutting the boards for the undercarriage, another is taking couplers off, still others are removing trucks. Everybody has a role. Wheels and trucks are perhaps the most compelling part of any railroad model. They're loaded with detail that will be missed without proper weathering. Trucks naturally are the part of any railroad car to develop weathered surfaces with multiple colors due to rust, to dust, earth, and general grime. There's a three-step process we used here. 
One, roof brown on the wheel surfaces other than the treads. Number two, the second coat was to apply the original Tuscan Red as a light overspray on the outer surfaces of the wheel, and this shows the early stages of rust developing. And number three, the final coat is with engine black as a fine overspray to tie all those colors together. Notice that we had all the wheels removed from the trucks to make sure we could paint all the surfaces. We finished the process with the wheels by applying a coat of dull coat to seal the work. Here we are applying an overspray of roof brown to the journal boxes and to the springs. Now this is going to act as a base coat for the engine black and the dry brushing to come. Remember, roof brown simulates old rust that has turned darker. This is exactly what you would expect to see in a lot of road hardened freight cars. So save the rust color paint for the areas that make frequent metal to metal contact like coupler faces. In this shot, we're adding a light overspray of engine black to the truck side frames as a means to get ready for the final step, which is dry brushing the trucks. Here you can see the value of removing the trucks before you weather them. When you're holding them in your hand, you can pivot them and weather the parts of the truck that you could never get to if they were still attached to the car. You can see what dry brushing does to make the detail pop out on the trucks. The light tan acrylic paint has been dry brushed onto the trucks to pick up edges, rivets, springs, journal boxes, and any other fine detail. You can see in the foreground the paper we used to get most of the paint out of the brush before the application. Now take your time with the step. This is one area where the investment of a little more time with a dry brush will result in a striking appearance. Here you see the finished car. Now remember how clean and shiny it was just a few hours ago? Some strategic airbrushing and dry brushing over the car's details have made it look real. The next four shots give a good idea of what the car looks like in its natural habitat. Remember, the idea is to make this look like something other than a plastic model. This Bachmann car has tons of nice detail, but no one will see most of it without a credible weathering job.
Here are some shots of a Bachmann Plastic 280. Looks pretty detailed, doesn't it? There's nothing shiny. Everything looking like the locomotive has been in road service for some time. Now notice the metal parts. You can see the quote unquote rust. Some new rust, lots of old rust. I mean, look at the stack. Think about how smoke, how soot, how steam and moisture contact the locomotive and allow that to drive your weathering. A good way to build your weathering expertise is to look at photographs of the real thing. Now, while it may be tough to find many old photos in full color, it's not impossible. And Trains Magazine publishes photos of various steam prototypes every month. When you see a picture, or perhaps in person if you're on a fan trip, you can get an image in your head, and you can learn to duplicate that with an airbrush, a dry brush, and some weathering powders. Okay. Most of the weathering techniques we showed you in the video were used to create a locomotive that when photographed at a natural setting like you see here, it's hard to tell from the real thing. Just imagine this shea as it comes from the factory, shiny, new looking, and loaded with gorgeous detail that gets lost easily in the gloss black paint. This locomotive looks like it is faded in the sun, and it has a realistic dusty exterior that just screams real. Add some details and figures, and this looks very believable. By the way, even military vehicles weather. I mean, you might notice the windshields on these Jeeps could certainly use some cleaning. Well, fortunately, the windshield wipers have cleared the grime so the driver can see. And by the way, you can do this too on your models. Just cut some cellophane tape in a half moon shape to simulate the coverage of the wipers and stick it on the windshields. Then do an overspray with doll coat. And after you remove the tape, your windshields will look just like this. By the way, creating weathered masterpieces doesn't have to be limited to engines and rolling stock. This photo sequence shows a typical die cast tow truck that has morphed from shiny and toy-like into one that you could imagine sitting next to in a country gas station. Remember how fenders and doors used to rush through in the old days? Well, a few well-placed holes drilled with a cutter bit and a Dremel tool can make a hole with some rough edges. Simply add some roof brown feathered in around those edges and you have a realistic rush through. Here is a classic example of a plastic model that has been transformed from toy to serious model. As these pictures sequence, notice how the canvas shade adds realism, how the streaks on the boiler simulate water runoff, and how the parts that would be metal in real life look like metal because they've been weathered. The next five pictures show a Bachmann Shea that was modified to a three truck version. Now beyond the modification, notice how the addition of tools, a green hose made from solder by the way, some cans and pilot details like common jewelry chains that have been rusted really make this plastic model come alive. You know, weathering should be fun and a creative outlet. So use your imagination and don't be afraid to experiment. The best news is if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. Mineral spirits will remove most of those mistakes without taking off the original paint and numbering. So have some fun. We hope you have enjoyed this video and picked up some ideas and tips as you weather your own cars. Nothing makes a train look more real than a credible weathering job. And if you follow the simple steps we've outlined here, you too can have rolling stock and locomotives that will be the envy of your friends. The Sundance Central modular layout is a dynamic project that will likely never stop evolving. Hopefully this video has provided you with some insight and useful hints on how to construct a modular layout in large scale. To learn more about the Sundance Central, go to www.sundancecentral.org.